Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to have you here as ever, because on today's episode, finally, we're going to be getting to work. We need to build ourselves a welding table. We've nipped into town, we've done some errands, we finally ended up getting some welding gas and some welding wire, and what we're now gonna do is we are gonna start cutting some steel. What Will has just done is he has just made the Spark Guard 2000! That is right, the Spark Guard 2000. Very exciting. This is gonna cover up the sparks from his chop saw here. We have some two by two inch section ready to be cut. And speaking of ready to be cut. Let's cut it. I was actually gonna talk about the plan. Here is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna have two frames like this. So we're gonna cut four 36 inch sections, four 32 inch sections, and four 29 inch sections, because that's gonna give us a 38 inch table height, allowing for the five inch caster height. We have some super duper beefy casters right here. This should just be lovely for the welding table. I mean that we can scoot it around if we need it to, lock it down if we want it to lock down too. The steel is lined up and ready to get cut on Will's beefy chop saw. So we have the pieces all cut up. I have prepped the ends, ground a little bit of a bevel on there so we can fill it up with weld. And we're gonna get ready to make uh, one of the first frames. And this concrete floor isn't super duper flat. Um, and the ends of this material aren't super duper square. Some of them are slightly off and what have you. So what I'm gonna do is when I weld it, I'm not just gonna set the steel right up against the next piece of steel. What I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna leave a little bit of a gap there. I'll use a little bit of wire. We'll make a, you know, make a little bit of a gap. We're gonna tack it in the middle on all four sides. And then that means that there's space for this to move either side just a little bit and for us to square everything up. So it is on with the welder. Whoa, look at that. Woo, fancy. You know what? I'm such a numpty. I didn't turn on the gas. Great first start. I just welded up the frame. I've started to kind of grind off my super clean, not pigeon poopy at all looking weld. And now Alec is going to weld up the second frame while I continue grinding off my super clean, not pigeon poopy looking welds. And then we'll weld the two together using some 29 inch pieces of square tubing over there. And then we'll weld the casters on the bottom. And then we'll weld the big, is it half inch or five eighths inch plate? It's half inch. Half inch plate on the top. And we'll have a roly poly welding table. So while it is I'm welding up on that and uh, doing some pigeon poop in there, we this morning got some hydraulic oil for the hydraulic press. So now we've got the hydraulic oil, you just kind of open it up and just kind of pour it all over the top, make sure there's a nice coating all over the hydraulic press. That's how it uses, no? No, Will. Well, that's news you, to me. You don't do that. You pour the hydraulic oil on the floor, for goodness sake. Oh! Well, looks like that's where it actually goes. The problem is, is that there's like a little gate down there, and I don't know if it's gonna open up for the hydraulic oil. I think it must do. Is there an instruction manual? <clears throat> well, this will be quick. All I have to do is learn how to read, and then we'll be good. <whistles> Installation and commissioning, regular inspection, seal list. It doesn't look like much of a picture book. I don't think we're gonna be able to survive with this. Hey, here oh. they are. We found the pictures. There's an oil tank. It's definitely where the oil goes. There we go. It's working. Only 29 and a half more gallons to go, Will. Oh my gosh. <laughs> or should we shotgun? You want to stab it so it's gonna not have that? You want me to? I kind of do, yeah. Oh gosh. Now it's gonna pour fast enough that we're gonna have a hard time keeping up with it though. Could I be more useful than just filming? Yes, you definitely could.
The oil is in the machine. We've got the pedal down here. Here is the plug. This is 220 single phase. So we give it the old stick in, little twist there. It's in. So here we go. We get to turn it on. Whoa, here it goes. There it goes. Whoa. That makes a hell of a noise. <laughs> okay, back to the welding table. I just tried my hand at welding. This is like one of your first welding projects, right? Yep. Keyword there is tried. Oh. It's relatively solid. Oh. It probably won't fall down at some point. Maybe. We'll see. The great thing is, is I can't really say anything about it because I wouldn't do much better if I'd done all of it myself. Yeah, well, so to be fair, I have my, my real only welding experience because as you guys know, I'm a bladesmith, not a blacksmith, not a fabricator. My real only experience doing welding where it mattered was tacking up billets of Damascus and welding the handles on. And they don't matter. But... I reckon up next, Will, what we've got to do is we need to measure from here to here. Here to here. Oh, this one looks a little long. Hey, it's it. How's that look? Whoa! But this is the floor level. No, no, it's about the same. I think we're good. Don't... Oh, that's why you said done. Oh. Yeah, it's not very level that way. Only about a half inch off. <laughs> <laughs> about a quarter of an inch off. How do we get a quarter inch out of level? <laughs> Let's grind it off. So you got the frame welded together. I was gonna say the next what were you gonna say? <laughs> well, I don't know. Welding is a stretch. <laughs> <laughs> what would you? What would be the word you'd go for, Will? We, s we slapped it together. <laughs> you know, fabric cobbled. <laughs> oh, I like fabric cobbled. That's a good word. So I figured the next step was gonna be we weld on the half-inch steel plate. But you pointed something out to me. How much does this, does that plate weigh again? Three hundred and fifty pounds. That's what you pointed out. And so, because it's going on casters, and because we're trying to follow a good order of operations, we're gonna attach these bad boys onto the bottom. But we don't have a tap and die set, so we can't screw them up. We don't have any bolts. So, it's our, it's time, it's time for our favorite thing ever, which is a trip to Ace. That's a quarter 20, grab a little tap wrench. And we're back. We can't get all four. That is a very good point. We can do three. Best three I, it is. Best I can do is three. We have a vice on a table. Will, you're the man with many vices. What is it? It is a Reed 105, which means that it does not have a swivel base, does not have a swivel jaw, and it has five inch jaws. So it's pretty, pretty decent size anyways, like 80 pounds, something like that. So compared to this guy, it's really small. But compared to most vices that you buy nowadays, it's really big and it's awesome. And I love it. We now have one awesome horizontal space to fill up 
with clutter to make things on, hopefully, which is gonna be good, because to make this table, we had to make it on the floor, which is not so nice as making a table on a table. So for all the other things that we need to make and fab up, this here is gonna be one handy dandy little work surface. It's been such an exciting little time here. I'm thrilled we got this press running. <laughs> and I'm also thrilled to have brought you along for the journey. I cannot wait to see you on the next episode. We have just so much to do and it is such a thrill to share this with you guys. Don't forget, please head on over to alexsteelshop.com. Grab yourself some of the merch. Your support means so much to me. Helps make all this happen. I'm very grateful. We have not only the awesome Montana collection, like this Steel Does Montana shirt, but also cool stuff like this It's Not Stupid If It Works shirt. Thank you so, so much. Can't wait to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.